Ooh, what it is, YouTube? It's your boy DC coming back with another Bulls Eye tutorial here today on the channel. I wanted to drop none other than Gunner Wanna YSL Slack. Them dripping saucy vocals. Let's get to it. Let's not waste no time. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. Drop more suggestions for artists y'all want to see. We getting back to these vocal templates, and we got a banger here today. Check the links down below to the uh, you know support the channel. So let's get into it right. Right now, these gunner gems. Yeah. Ran on the race like I won. Count on the race with no gun. Carrots on one on no points. Clarity TVs, I see water. Talk to catch shit like I won. 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 Ran on the race like I won. Count on the race with no gun. Carrots on one on my points. Clarity TVs, I see water. I don't see trying to catch it like I want. Try to catch it like I want. Try to catch it like I want. Okay, so you guys got an understanding of what we working here with today. I want to get right to it. So um, let's look at Gunner's auto-tune settings. A guy like Gunner, I feel like his vocal has this very smooth and very charismatic characteristic to it. He has a very kind of mellow tone, kind of like that guy sitting in the back of the club, that player, that pimp that's posted up in the cut vibe, and you feel me? That's what Gunner's sound kind of reminds me of, right? That's the atmosphere. That's kind of what I'm ear imagine. That's what's going through my ear imagination right now. Imagine it with my ears that he's a smooth player. So I, I like to use uh, these type of auto tune settings for Gunner. Five retune speed, which is moderately fast. You still hear the effect with a decent amount of humanized. So there isn't too much blip, 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 blips and choppiness in the auto tune. Yeah. Ran on the racks like I won. Count on the racks when I'm gonna. I don't care if I'm one of my points. Clear the VVs, I see one. I'm trying to catch it like I won. Okay, so after that, let's get right to the preset. Let's bypass it in and out. Ran on the racks like I won. Count on the racks when I'm gonna. I don't care if I'm one of my points. Clear the VVs, I see water. I don't turn the cash in like I... Ran on the racks like I won. Count on the racks when I'm gonna. I don't care if I'm one of my points. Ran on the racks like I won. Count on the racks when I'm gonna. I don't care if I'm one of my points. Ran on the racks like I won. Count on the racks when I'm gonna. I don't care if I'm one of my points. Clear the VVs, I see water. I don't talk to cash in like I want. Ran on the racks like I won. Count on the racks when I'm gonna. I don't. Ran on the racks like I won. Count on the racks when I'm gonna. I don't care if I'm one of my points. Clear the VVs, I see water. I don't talk to cash in like I want. Ran on the racks like I won. Count on the racks when I'm gonna. I don't care if I'm one of my points. Clear the VVs, I see water. I don't talk to cash in like I want. So Gunner has this very smooth and elegant type of vocal. It reminds me of a wine glass. It reminds me of champagne being poured into a really nice bottle. Okay, so the thing about Gunner, too, is that we have some ad-libs as well that we're going to look at. But I feel like with his vocal, you got to understand where is the density in the rapper's vocal. For example, every person, you know, on their body, you know, some people, they're fat in their chest. Some people are fat in the legs. Some people are fat on their shoulders. It's kind of like a vocal. You got to decide, okay, where is the thickness at of the vocal? Some Sometimes there might be an over excess of thickness and you might want to cut it back. Other times there might be a good amount of thickness that you might want to enhance for the vocal to, you know, swell it up a little bit, get it a little swole. OK, so with Gunner's vocal listening, it's that low mid density. He has this nice, really uh, low mid density inside of his vocal that we're trying to get to pop. First thing that we use is this EQ move right here. Um, and we're just kind of like reshaping that fat. We're giving a little bit of a lipo. You feel me? You know, like liposuction type of surgery, taking the fat and we kind of readjusting it uh, on Gunner's vocal to start out here today. So, you know, adjusting the mid range a little bit, you know, just trying to get it really tighty because I'm about to boost it back in a certain way with saturation. You feel me? So it can be that rich type of low mid. Ran on the racks like I won. Count on the racks when I'm gonna. I don't care if I'm one of my points. Clear the VVs, I see water. I don't talk to cash in like I won. Ran on the racks like I won. Count on the racks when I'm gonna. I don't care if I'm one of my points. So you guys get the main idea. Also doing a little bit of a boost right here. 
um, just to give a little bit of a high shelf and then a cut. And when you do something like that, you're focusing the high end. Important for somebody like Gunner is understanding the seesaw. You know, your ears work like a seesaw. This is the low end. This is the high end. So because his vocal has that low mid type of push in it naturally, you know, the seesaw is kind of tilted downwards just a little bit. Not as much as if you had an over excess of low end. If you had like too much bass, you would not hear the highest because your ears work like a seesaw. You feel me? They tilt it and stuff like that, like bass and treble. Um, so the thing about it is he, the seesaw is tilted slightly a little bit. He got, slightly got a little bit more lower tones in his vocal. And that's really good. It helps make his vocal really romantic, really uh, flirtatious, kind of like a Tinder style vocal Gunner has. He's kind of flirting and stuff like that. Um, okay. Next thing that we got right here is the DSer. Ran on the racks like I want. Count on the racks when I'm gonna. I don't care if I'm one of my points. Clear the BBs, I see one. I'm trying to cash in like I want. So Gunner's vocal is already kind of naturally smooth anyway. He just has a smooth uh, vocal character. So maybe sometimes you got to listen to the transients inside the vocal of, of a rapper. If somebody... And they got that spitting, you know, uh, type of... Um, vocal where they're just spitting and spitting and their vocals higher maybe you might want to uh, be precautious about how much DSing you're doing maybe you don't want to do it on one DSer maybe you want to use two DSers or even let the job be done by maybe like an analog model plugin right because a lot of the times those analog model components will smooth off the high end for you naturally so that's a way you got to think about transient management inside of a, a mix when it comes to the vocals like how sharp are the vocals you know like that annoying kid in school that keeps poking and poking and poking how many times can the vocal uh how many times can that annoying ass kid poke the other kid before they get mad as hell and they want to fight you feel me like that's you as an engineer how many times can this vocal start to poke through before the the audience is no longer interested in the song all right so after that we have the c4 uh we're using that pop vocal preset uh just doing a little bit of compression on that high end you know like we're managing it the ds did a little bit now the c4 is doing a little bit ran on the ranch like i want Count on the racks when I'm gonna. I don't care if I'm one of my points. Clear the BBs, I see one. I don't talk to cash in like I want. I don't talk to cash in like I want. Ran on the racks like I want. Count on the racks when I'm gonna. I don't care if I'm one of my points. Clear the BBs, I see one. I don't talk to cash in like I want. Most importantly is now we're starting to contain that, that low mid density. So if that, and let's say if that low mid density was like on somebody's body, right? It's low mid. Let's say it's like the fat on their belly. Now we're using the C4 uh, multiband compressor as a belt. You feel me? We're putting that belt on the waist to control that, that low mid thickness, that fat. You feel me? That's on the body of the vocal type shit. All right? So after that, now this is kind of like where we're doing the additive processing. We got that low mid under control. Now I want to boost it back with saturation. Okay, cool. I'm not going to do EQ because I don't want more frequencies. I just want more thickness of that, of that low mid, of that character in his vocal. So I use the Fairchild, which the Fairchild has tubes inside of it. So once you understand the components, knowing that tubes give a little bit of that, that really low mid thickness, you know, it has tubes and transformers. So together, this is like a super funky gumbo jambalaya type of soup that we cooking up right now that got like thick pieces of corn and thick pieces of ingredients and chicken and whatever, all that type of stuff in there. Um, the Fairchild specifically is bringing in that saturation that's making the vocal sound thicker, right? Ran on the racks like I want. Count on the racks when I'm gonna. I don't care if I'm one of my points. Clear the BBs, I see one. I don't talk to cash in like I want. Ran on the racks like I want. Count on the racks when I'm gonna. I don't care if I'm one of my points. Clear the BBs, I see one. I don't talk to cash in like I want. So when you're an engineer, you're like an artist, you feel me? You know, like great artists and great painters, they always draw out the outline first. So usually when it comes to you being an engineer and you're an artist, the outline of the vocal is kind of like, where do you want it to sit? How do you want it to feel dynamically? Do you want it to do jumping jacks and jump back and forth? Or do you want it to be, you know, stable and steady? Like how I had that C4 just kind of, you know, being the belt, just holding, holding that low mid just so it could sit there properly. Like how a belt would make your pants just sit there properly and not fall off, you feel me? So after that, once you do your little sketching your little outline which is like your rough eq and then you start to you know bring in the color you feel me so it's the same shit being an engineer is like being an artist you are not a robot beep negative 1.2 negative 3.5 people pop compressing eq tame the peaks 
you feel me? You're not a fucking robot. You're an artist too, you know? The rapper's an artist and you're an artist. So after that, REQ, boom, just very simple, tonal balancing type of thing. Ran on the racks like I won. Count the racks we gon' win. I don't care if I'm one of my points. Clear the BBs, I see one. I'm trying to cash in like I won. Ran on the racks like I won. Count the racks we gon' win. I don't care if I'm one of my points. Clear the BBs, I see one. I'm trying to cash in like I won. Okay, so after that, we have the SSLE channel, you know, just using this mostly for uh, a little trick that I like to use when you uh, pull the threshold all the way down, it will give you this type of saturation that gives a little bit of, of a high mid presence. So I'm adding more color onto the canvas right now, but I'm using a different color. The Fairchild is giving me that nice, warm, low mid a density, that glow from the, the tubes and the transformers. Now I'm using the SSLE doing the saturation trick, pulling the threshold open, and that's giving me a different color, which is more high mid density. So I had a little bit of fat on my stomach. Now we're trying to add a little bit of fat onto the shoulders, which is higher up. So it's like the density is in different places on the vocal and you got to figure out how to use it to your advantage. You feel me? Because you could have it feeling thick on one part and not the other and get it to really start to sit into the mix well, understanding saturation. You feel me? So it's like understanding like when you eat eating food, you know, different parts of the chicken have different sizes. You feel me? They have like a, a chicken thigh doesn't have as much meat on it as a, a you know, well, I think it does have more meat than a, a chicken drumstick, you know. So different parts have different amounts of meat and body and fat on it. So that's how I like to approach this as a mix. You know, I feel like this is a really different type of concept. You feel me? Like I feel like nobody ever talks about this type of stuff, like how to EQ the vocal, right? draw the outline but then color it back in with a certain color of crayon to give it a certain flavor that makes it match the whole the whole song so we done already got the body feeling good now we're trying to boost up the high mid but through saturation the vca on the ssle type shit all right so after that we have the rvox and man that rvox adds the low mid density you feel me but just a, a light amount of it just really tonally balancing everything and it also gives presence Count on the racks when I'm gonna, I don't care if I'm one of my points. Clear the BBs, I see one, I'm trying to cash in like I won. Try to cash in like I won. Ran on the racks. I like this Arvox a lot because it kind of blows up the vocal. It makes it a little bit more fat, fattening, you know? Um, it goes... The vocal goes from being kind of like a flat bike tire to a bike tire that is full of air that's pumped up. You feel me? Now I can move and roll along the street, which is the beat in a proper way. You feel me? So we have the fresh air as well. And this is just bringing in some mainstream brightness. Nothing to see here. We know what that does. Another de-esser. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, now we have the um, H delay, which is just pretty much just a standard H delay. Nothing crazy. I know flow who is a Gunner's engineer. He's a wonderful engineer. You guys should look him up, Flo. Uh, I think he did an interview with him and Baines about the Sphere microphone, and they just sat there and talked about their process. I should type it up on YouTube, Flo, Gunner's engineer. Watch it. You see his mindset, which is more important than the plugins, the mindset of the engineer, because he's the one that's with Gunner, like, you know, in the vibe of the, of the room. You know, Gunner's freestyling, and that's important as an engineer to have good energy, good energy, because you are kind of like the coach, you know, like Rocky Balboa. He used to have his coach tell him, hit him, kid, hit him, kid. That's what the engineer does. The engineer kind of hypes up the rapper. He tells the rapper how he got to stick and move on the beat. You feel me? He's the motivator. You feel me? So it's under, important to understand the personality of the um, engineer, because one thing I noticed about Flo I watched the interview and I was like, bro, this thing, this thing is a chill ass thing. And no wonder Gunner's music sounds so chill because his engineer is chill too. So his personality is going into it too. Very important to know as an engineer, your personality is going to go into the music too. You feel me? Like if you got like a, you know, if you're weird in the room, they might just kick you out. You might never get to be an engineer if you're just a, a weird ass nigga because your energy is off. You know, artists know how to sense energy. When you have good energy and y'all coming together on a song, the vibe is going to be felt by the whole world. You know, they both smooth ass niggas. Flow, his engineer is smooth. Gunner is smooth. So that's why the music sounds super smooth. You feel me? So uh, Abbey Rhodes plate. You feel me? Giving a, a rich, a rich type of reverb. Ran on the racks like I want. Counting the racks when I'm gonna, I don't care if I'm one of my points. 
Uh, after that, we have a doubler stomp. Love using the doubler stomp. It kind of got this little flanging modulation. Makes the auto tune uh, sound even smoother. Okay. And then after that, we have the uh, Fairchild again, um, but using it in parallel this time, kind of like really clamping down onto the vocal. It's um, important to understand the release time of the compressor. <clears throat> okay. Because the song is relatively slow. The tempo is 120, right? In parallel, you, 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 you want your vocal to the, the parallel compression to be able to keep up with the actual vocal itself. If the rapper is rapping fast, something like a Fairchild might not work. You feel me? Because the needle is pinned down the whole time. Ran on the racks like I want. Count on the racks when I'm gonna. I don't care if I'm one of my points. Clear the VVs, I see what. And that, that that doesn't just apply to um, parallel compression. That's compression in general. You know, you want that release time to be able to keep up with the rapper's flow. And if it, and sometimes maybe you don't want that. Some maybe sometimes you might have somebody who rapping do, 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 do fast like that. You feel me? Like sound like they in a rush to go somewhere. Sound like they in rush hour traffic type of flow. You feel me? You might have somebody like that who feels like they're in a rush, and maybe you do use a little bit of slow attack compression to tell they flow to calm the fuck down and kind of restrain their their flow a little bit you know like when you do compression you're kind of doing like a time shift too you feel me like you're like a slow release time will ho hold it back it will it will hold the vocal back a little bit so the vocal can't move and wiggle around as much all right so the ad libs real quick boom use the fresh air and i love gunner's crispy mainstream texture boom stupid fresh air saturating right to get the brightness but then cutting it down with the eq so that's how we're getting the chicken to be crispy early on we're putting that oil in that grease in there boom with that fresh air it's giving us that texture then i'm cutting it with the eq and it's giving this nice like you still feel like the ad-libs are bright but they're still like regular ad-libs though Ran on the racks like i want count on the racks when i'm gonna i don't care if i'm one of my points Clear the VVs, I see one. I don't talk to cash in like I don't. Gives this nice, nice, nice type of like sandpaper type of feel. Okay. And then after that, we have the Arvox that's bringing in density uh, to, to the ad libs and, uh, you know, using the Fairchild again. Boom. I held the threshold the whole way down. Ran on the racks like I want. Count on the racks when I'm gonna. I don't care if I'm one of my points. Clear the VVs, I see. The thing about the Fairchild is the release number six is the most dynamic one, right? So the all the other time concerts on the Fairchild are a little bit slower, a little bit less responsive. They kind of bump and groove. But the number six one is pretty good for like a vocal or sometimes on the Master Fader 2, if you have complex material, complex um, drum patterns and stuff like that, number six will react better because it has like a multi-stage type of release, okay? And then, uh, yeah, we used another chorus stomp, H delay, R verb with a flanger sitting behind that bit to make the uh, reverb move too. So yeah, we got through this one pretty quickly here today i was very excited to bring this one to you so if you guys do like the preset you can check it in the links down below okay don't forget to like comment and subscribe just want to say thank you so much for being a great part of my youtube family don't forget to suggest more artists so we can keep getting on top of these templates appreciate y'all now peace